welcome back to my classroom, uh, Ewan, Ewan's classroom. Uh, one of the most popular subjects seems to be looking at my YouTube channel, Stability. I've only got two videos on there, both part of the same question. So I thought I'd do another Stability video, this time bilging. Midships bilging specifically, um, there is a flat and there is permeability. So a combination of a few elements in that. So let's have a quick look at the question, specifically see what the demands are, see what our tactics will be. So box shape vessel, even keel in salt water. So not having to worry about dock water and changing volumes and weights, etc. Length, breadth, and a draft of five meters. There's a midships compartment with a length of 16 meters, full breadth of the vessel, great, so it's not side bilging. And from the watertight tank top to the freeboard deck. So that we obviously built above a watertight flat because it's from the tank top to the freeboard deck. Permeability, that's already calculated for us. So we don't have to go through the stowage factor calculation to get it. And we've got a height of the tank top at 1.8 meters. It's above the keel. And we're built above that with permeability. Fine. If this compartment is built, calculate each of the following. The final draft, 15 marks. And the change in GM, 20. So a total of 35 marks. That means we've got about 30 minutes. Um, so let's get on with it. See if we get it done well within that. So uh, worksheet, you're practicing for SQA and in that exam, there is a margin on both sides of the page. So it's a good idea to practice uh, in the manner in which you're gonna be playing the game. So I rule out the right-hand margin to get used to working within the restriction. Fine, so I said this was November 09. It's question number one. Uh, read it again, pull out any details that we need, but mostly I want to get my sketch done. Uh, repetitive sketch, it's the same sketch whether it's midships, bilging, or end bilging, just the details on it will change. So there's your side view that represents the beam of the vessel. I put in an initial water line, it's a midships bilging, so I just put in a midships compartment. I read the question, I remember that there's a watertight flat, so I just put a sort of thicker line, I just rule it a few extra times to give it that thickness, indicating that that's the watertight flat. Put in some dimensions, so length is 120 in that direction. Breadth, that's over here, that's 22 meters, and the draft is five. Nowadays, you should find it to three decimal places. Right, what else do we need? Midships compartment, the length is 16 meters. So here, just pay attention, get this out accurately onto your sketch, because that's what I'll be referring to as I calculate. I'm, I'm less likely to go back to the question. I'm more likely to simply rely on the data I've put onto the sketch in the relevant place. So if I want something, I fetch it directly from here. And the watertight tank top, well, permeability, so permeability, 0.65, and height of the tank top there is 1.8 meters. Now, as soon as I see that 1.8, it immediately, my brain is saying, right, we'll make the deduction, what is that? So that is 3.2 meters. Now, that's what's being built. We're gonna sink down, so I like to put in the bilged water line which is obviously going to be above the present water line. And we've got permeability. So 65% of this compartment is lost to bilging. So roughly two thirds. So I'm going to mark that up there. This is lost. And this is your stowage, solid stow factor. That's your cargo is in there. Uh, and that's solid now. We, we're assuming we've rammed the cargo up uh, excluded any uh, air space, any space water can um, flood into. So I've split that compartment to represent what's lost, which is that, 
and what is still displacing water, which is the solid stove factor. Right, so 65% and 35%. Right, I think we've got all the data there. We're good to go. And of course, what I can see, another reason I do this, is I mark off, I, I cross that out now while I'm seeing it and thinking, that's lost length of the intact water plane area. I'm seeing it, I'm noting it, I'm deleting it. It's lost, we don't have it. So when we come to calculate BM, uh, particularly, remember LB cubed over 12V, that L reduced. So first section of the calculation, because there's permeability, I need to calculate length lost. So that's uh, 16 times the permeability of 0.65. meters that means length of intact water plane area uh, is there for the 120 minus what we've lost 10.4 so minus 120 gives me 109.60 right those two values are done ready for me to proceed so I get them up front because I'm going to need them now so next container or waypoint leg of the solution volume lost so that's length times breadth times depth that d is depth it's not draft it's the depth of the compartment or depth of the volume lost so the length that's lost remember length lost volume lost is the 10.4 that's why i got it up to begin with the breadth of the compartment is the 22 and the depth of the compartment that I lost is the 3.2. Right. And that's meters cubed because it's a volume. Next, intact water plane area. This is the length of the intact water plane area that's recovering volume. Displacement. As you sink down, what's the length of the recovering um, underwater volume, reserve buoyancy that's going down into the sea? If I was to mark it up on here, then what you're looking at is you've got that there plus that cargo, which is still displacing water, and then that there. You combine those, that's combining to show you what the remaining intact length is and of course the bit that we've lost is that bit there that's the 10.4 that's lost and the green is the 109.6 that's still intact and still contributing to our buoyancy so intact water plane area the formula is length times breadth the length is 109.6 the breadth is the 22. And we'll find out what that is. What I 9.6 times 22. 2411.2. That's meters squared. Right. Therefore, sinkage is volume lost divided by intact water plane area. That's why I do the calculation in that order because it gives me the two numbers that go directly into that formula in sqa always state what your target is what the formula you're using is and what the values are and then the answer that you actually get For new true mean draft. That was the original of five. Yep. Plus the sinkage. I'm going to take a wild guess without my calculator. 5.304 meters. That is part A. I need to label that. Well, actually, I started up here, so let me put it there. And highlight the answer new true mean draft and there it is uh, 15 marks 
Happy days, no complaints there. Good to go, right. You can see what the time is, I can't. Not sure how long that took, but probably not long. See if there's anything on my controls, no. Nope. Okay, let's move on to part B. Calculate the change in GM. Again, let's rule the page. Keep that discipline, part B. Put that in the left-hand margin. And it's what we're after is change in GM. Well, G isn't moving. G is stationary. There's no load discharge or shift of weight. Not if we do bilging in the loss displacement method, which is what we're doing. We're not doing the added weight method. That would be a different calculation. Uh, so we're doing the loss of displacement method. Therefore, M will change. So KM is changing. KM is made up of KB plus BM. So we need to look at, has KB changed? It always will, because as you sink, the height of the central buoyancy of the remaining compartments above the keel will always increase. KB is always going to get bigger. Um, BM is directly influenced by the size of the intact water plane area. This is the formula. BM is LB cubed over 12V. Now the volume isn't changing. The distribution of the volume changes, but the size of the volume does not change. Therefore, what influences BM is going to be changes to the length and breadth of the intact water plane area. And here, because it's symmetrically midships, it's the length that's changing. And we've already seen that in part A of this question. So, do we need to get KB and BM? Well, in this case, yes. KB, we always need to get in these calculations. BM, you only need to calculate it if there's a change to that intact water plane area. We've seen that there is, therefore we must. So, let's do initial... KM. Right, so KB first. Uh, when there's no watertight flat influencing the underwater volume, then half draft is the way to go. The original draft was 5, so it's 5 divided by 2. So KB is 2.5 meters. Now I'm dropping to two decimal places because KBs, BMs, GMs, KGs, we calculate to 2. Therefore, I'm staying consistent with that. Drafts and trim, we worked at three decimal places. Therefore, when I was doing volume loss, sinkage, neutral mean draft, I worked at three decimal places because it's consistent with drafts and trim. Right, so KB done. BM, remember, it's BM initial. I write the initial. Fix your mind on the initial values. Formula, LB cubed over 12V. The length of the intact water plane area in the initial condition was the full 120. The original breadth, or am I writing B again, 22, and don't forget that's cubed, easy to overlook it. Uh, it's 12 times the volume of displacement, that being 120 by breadth of 22 and by depth of 5. All right. When I calculate, I always do the bottom line first. Now, I'm going to calculate and write that there. I'm going to put it in memory because it'll be useful when I do the bilge compartment. Sorry, the bilge condition. So, 120 by 22 by 5 times that by 12. So, that gives me 158400. Shift store into memory. So I put the answer that value into the memory of the calculator. Now it's 120 times the breadth cubed divided by recall the memory. So I'm dividing it by that number now, and it gives me my initial BM 8.07 meters. Therefore, the original KM is KB plus. BM 2.5 plus 8.07 is 10.57 meters. All right, okay, so again, it's unitized. And if you have a look at that count, first I did the KB, there's one container. Then did the BM, that's a second container. And then third, the smallest of the lot, do the 
Okay, fine. So these are waypoints, if you like, on the voyage to getting the answer. We did initial, now let's do bilged. Because remember, we're looking for the change. Change needs to compare two different scenarios. And in this case, it's comparing the initial to the final. And we're going to go again, KB, BM, KM. So, KB. Now, is there a watertight flat influencing the underwater volume? The answer is yes. And as soon as you say yes, there's a watertight flat. And my recommendation is, if there's a watertight flat in the question, full stop, don't do half draft. We're now in the bilge compartment. Some of that underwater volume has been bilged. It will affect the vertical symmetry of the B of each compartment. Therefore, we can't use half draft. We're going to need to do it an alternative method. And the way I do it is volumetric moments. And it's just a kg table. But instead of it being weights and centers of gravity above the keel, it's volumes and center of buoyancy above the keel. But otherwise, it's identical. So let's make up uh, three columns. So the first column is volume then it will be k b small b because each of the individual volumes and that will give us the moments volumetric moments fine so we start with the full theoretical volume now forget about the original the, the ship is now built ignore the what happened before we don't care we've done that that's up there in the initial condition fix your mind the only thing that you're focusing on now is bilge bilge condition and at the moment the ship's bilged underwater volume that's the whole so we start with the full theoretical volume all right so full like theoretical volume well the length of it is 120 the breadth of it is 22 and the depth or draft in that bilge condition is that one there the bilge 5.304 now what is the kb of that there it's half of that draft so it's we're multiplying that by 5.304 divided by two it's half of that that will give us that value fine let's punch that out while we're at it so 120 times 22 by 5.304 gives us that full theoretical volume and it does include what's been bills but we will be deducting that next start with the whole then deduct what's been bilged and is not producing buoyancy which will give us the final kb Right, so I'm going to multiply that by 5.304 divided by 2 in brackets, and that will give me those moments. And yep, yeah, I'm rounding it up. I don't need any decimal places. If you go to one decimal place, fine, but if you do more than that, you, you wait. It's, it's not conceivably influencing the answer in any way, shape, or form. So rounding that up, or down appropriately is fine right so that's the full but we must now deduct this here this is bilge this volume this part of that full is not generating buoyancy and therefore we must minus the lost volume but it's not what was lost in from the initial condition we're not in the initial condition we're in the bilge condition so we must deduct what's not producing buoyancy in the bilged condition don't confuse it with the part a now the last volume the length of that and we again length lost is 10.4 right the breadth that's 22 and the depth of it, well, it was 3.2 up to the original waterline plus the sinkage of 0.304. So what we're we looking at, let me just get my pen and mark it up on here. You're looking for this depth here. 
So we've got the original 3.2 and we've got the sinkage, which is 0.304. Right, so let me do that in my head. So that's 3.504. Now, we need the center of buoyancy of that. That's lost. Well, i just draw it in. The geometric center of this lost compartment is there. Right? And we need KB. So from the keel to there. That's what I'm after. Let me put it in a darker pen. That is what I need to go into this table. Right, well, we know it's the 1.8 up to there. And what I need now is half that. Well, I know the height of that compartment, don't I? It's 3.504. So half of that will give me from the watertight flat to the center. So 3.504 divided by 2. That gives me this bit here. That's 1.75 plus the 1.8 so if you like you can put it here 1.75 plus 1.8 right well that is it i don't have to divide by two that's it so plus 1.8 that gives me 3.55 right so let's multiply out the moment that is lost 10.4 times 22 times 3.504 that's the last volume times 3.55. So we're going to minus 2846. Right. Draw a line, get the final values. Now, the full theoretical volume minus the last volume in bilging volume lost equals volume recovered. You should come back to exactly the same original volume of displacement of the barge. So I just use the original values. It's much simpler in case I made an error in part A. So the full length 120, full beam 22, original draft 5. So that is 2645. Let's obtain the final moments 37, 135 times 2846. Not times, you silly fella. Minus two eight four six three four two eighty nine. Therefore, KB is that divided by that. That is not possible. Let me go and check that value there. Sorry. Where did I get that from? That's a silly value. Clearly wrong. 13200. And I didn't pick on that. But anyway, at least I saw it in the end. 134289 divided by 13200. That's more like it. 2.60. Should be bigger than the original. It is. It's increased. So I'm happy with that. Right. BM in the bilged condition. Yep, we lost some water plane area. Therefore, it's changed. Therefore, we need to recalculate it. The formula LB cubed over 12B. The length 109.6. The breadth still 22, and that's cubed. I kept that number available to use it again now. Benefits of getting old. There are some benefits. Right, so 109.6 times 22 cubed divided by my Christmas bonus. And that gives me a K, sorry, a BM of 7.37 meters. Right, therefore, I'm just going to squeeze up a bit of space here. Uh, the KM 
in the bilge compartment, sorry, bilge condition is those two added together, 2.6 plus 7.37, that's 9.97789, yep, 9.97 meters. And the KM initial we calculated up there was 10.57 meters. Comparing those two will give us the answer to pop in, which is change. All right, so change. Let's have a look. What are we doing? Uh, that looks like 60 centimeters to me, 0 0.60. But is an increase or decrease? Don't just leave it there. The change, like a difference, it has to be, did it get bigger? Did it get smaller? Don't just say change by 0 0.6. So KM was 10.57. So M has come down by 60 centimeters because KM is reduced. Therefore, GM is reduced. So say it. Reduced. And then please highlight your answer. Bring it to the attention of the marker. And Bob's your uncle. That's it. Short and sharp, 35 marks, 30 minutes. I think we've probably done it in something like 30 minutes. Yep. Uh, happy days. And that's with a lot of me chatting. So there's no excuse for you after lots of practice to get that done in the allotted time. And avoid mistakes. Look at the calculator. I did make mistakes. That was the, the biggest muck up there but I picked it up when I got what was obviously a wrong answer if you start writing down a KB of 12 meters then you should realize that you've made a mistake find it and fix it if you can't find it and you of course time is running in SQA mark it make a comment say this is obviously an error can't no time to find where I went wrong but if you don't acknowledge an obviously wrong answer it can end up costing you a principal deduction of half the marks for that part. I think there's 20 marks for that. So a principal error in part B is 10 marks. And whereas a clerical error would be two marks. So don't waste marks. Anyway, I hope that uh, is of some use. Um, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.